Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of using the Cauchy formula to prove a result about Fourier transforms. Let's recall what Fourier transforms are. So recall that if F maps R into R, it's sufficiently smooth and decaying at infinity enough that we can define F hat of XC is going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of F of X and then E to the minus 2 pi I X XC dx. Of course, there are different there are different notions of uh, different rescalings of the Fourier transform. Some have a one over two pi out, some have a one over root two pi out. But either of these things is, is equivalent to this. Okay, so up to a figuring out up to the circumference of the circle of the unit circle, this is one of the Fourier, definitions of the Fourier transform. Okay, excellent. So this is the Fourier transform, and we've studied Fourier transforms in our Fourier analysis videos, right? And, and we figured out how to do special examples of Fourier transforms. And so what I would like to do now is I'd like to show, here's a proposition. I'd like to show that the Fourier transform of f of x is e to the negative pi x squared, just a Gaussian function, right? This implies that f hat of xc, the Fourier transform of this function, has exactly the same form, which is beautiful, right? e to the negative pi xc squared. And this identity, we've used this identity in our Fourier analysis class as a basis for proving some of the Plancherel theorem, right, where we're using approximations to the identity using this idea. Okay, excellent. So I want to prove this over here. And so the idea is to consider idea. The look at the function f of z. We are going to extend f to the complex plane. I'm going to look at the function e to the negative pi z squared. Okay, so that's the function I'm going to consider. And now I'm going to draw a contour and you try to use Cauchy, right? So here's the idea. So suppose, suppose uh, that xc is greater than zero, first of all. And then here's the contour we're going to use, okay? So our contour is going to be in the upper half space, right? There's the real axis, there's the imaginary axis, right? And here's my contour. I'm going to go from negative r capital to r capital, like that like so. Then we're going to go up from R capital to this point, R capital plus I XC, like that. Then we're going to go over like this, over to negative R plus I XC, and then back down to negative R, like that. Okay, that's our contour. I'm going to call this contour gamma XC R. The whole contour is gamma XC R, right? So by Cauchy, we have that the integral over gamma xcr of f of z dz is equal to zero. It's a holomorphic function, right? This function is holomorphic everywhere. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm going to break this up into different pieces, okay? So there are four pieces. I'm going to call this piece number one, piece number two, piece number three, and piece number four. Okay? Let's analyze all these pieces. So piece number one is by far the easiest, right? So this is going to be four integrals over here. So in other words, this integral over here is going to be the sum. J goes from one to four. The integral, uh, we'll call, maybe we'll call these things over here like um, ij, right? So one uh, is i1, 2 is i2, 3 is i3, bad notation on my part, and then 4 is i4, right? ij, f of z, dz. Perfect, okay? So the sum of those four integrals is zero, right? So if I look at the integral over i1 of f of z, dz, that's the easiest, it's just going to be the integral from what? I can parameterize that because you're going from negative r to r. So I go from negative r to r, then I have e to negative pi, and I'm on the real axis over here. So I just get an x squared dx. That's what the first integral gives me. And that's going to be helpful for me, right? Because I know that as r goes to infinity, this tends to 1, right? So we know as r goes to infinity that this tends to 1. Okay, that's just the Gaussian integral, right? I know that the integral from zero, in other words, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative pi x squared dx is equal to one. That's something we proved in Calc 3, right? Good. What about the integral over i2? Uh, actually, two and four are very similar, right? Let's look at the integral over i2, i2 of f of z dz. 
this is going to be what? Well, now I'm going to go from 0 to xc. xc is some fixed number. And then I have e to negative pi, and then what? My x value, I'm just going to have, my z is what on this curve? My z is going to be x plus i, uh, x plus i, y, where x is going to be equal to r, right? So it's going to be r plus i, y. So on this curve, it's parameterized by r plus i, y, right, on that curve. So I'm going to have an r plus i, y squared, then I, a i, dy, right? Good. And so this is going to be the integral from 0 to xc, e to the negative pi. Then I have an r squared. Then I have a 2i r y. And then I have a what? Then I have a uh, negative y squared, i dy. Now, what happens as r goes to infinity over here? As r goes to infinity over here, this is e to the negative pi r squared. That's going to 0. And then y is this e to the pi y squared is just going to be bounded. It's bounded by e to the pi xc squared on that region. So this is, so e to the pi e to the pi y squared is bounded by e to the pi xc squared. That's a fixed number. This e to the, e to the 2i ry, well, e to the i anything is oscillatory, so that's bounded and modulus by 1. So this thing is looking like e to the negative pi r squared. This tends to 0 as r goes to infinity. So that term, this lateral face, is going to be zeroing out as r goes to infinity. And then let's see what was happening over here. On this fourth side, too, so I can just say similarly, the integral over i4 of f of z dz tends to 0 as r goes to infinity, okay? So as r goes to infinity in this contour, I get a 1, I get a 0, and I get a 0. Let's do the last contribution of 3, right? So on 3, what do we have? Integral over i3 of f of z dz. Well, how do we parameterize that interval over there? Let's look. So to parameterize 3, what's happening? You're going from really, you're really going from what to what? You're really going from r, you're going from r, to negative r, right? And then you're going to have a what? So now you're on the real axis again. So you have a fixed value of y. So you have an e to the negative pi. And then x is changing, x squared, x plus i. And then uh, your y value is xc, right? xc. And then you just have a dx, right? Squared, of course, dx. OK? Good. And so this is going to be what to what? And do I have any issues over here? I can flip this over here by making it negative, right? So I can make this negative. This is negative, the integral from negative r to r of e to the pi. And then we have a what? I'll have an x squared. I'll have an x squared, a 2 pi i x xc. And then a what? And then a i xc squared. That's going to be a negative xc squared, right? dx. Good. So this thing over here is what? This thing over here is essentially what I want, right? Because I have an e to the negative pi x squared and then a 2 pi i x x c, which is exactly what I see over here, right? What I'm trying to find is I'm, looking, I'm trying to do what? I'm trying to look at e to the negative pi x squared. So I have an e to the negative pi x squared, then a negative 2 pi i x x c, then a plus x c squared, right? So this is x c squared. This thing over here is really just e to the pi xc squared times the function, if that's my f, f hat, right? f hat of xc, right? So we have this over here, f hat of xc, and then this is the negative, right? So this minus 1 is equal to 0, right? If f, if e to the pi xc squared f hat minus 1 is equal to 0, that says that f hat of xc is the exponential of negative pi xc squared, and we've proven our result, right? So in other words, by taking a fixed contour, right, this fixed rectangular contour, and letting the, letting the rectangle size go to infinity, right, so it's turning into a strip, I can use Cauchy, and Cauchy is true for each of those rectangles, so I can pass the limit as r goes to infinity, and as r goes to infinity, we're able to deduce this result, namely that the Fourier transform of a Gaussian function over here like this is exactly self-replicating over here. So a very, very useful application of Cauchy. We'll see in further videos how I can use Cauchy with different types of contours to estimate other integrals very quickly, and then we'll sort of say, well, if I can use, I can only use Cauchy because this function over here is analytic, but then I can say, oh, if it has singularities in there, we'll just do the same procedure as the Cauchy integral formula and drill them out, right, on a toy contour, and that will give us the residue theorem. So we'll see further examples of this style of an argument in future videos. Thank you very much.